Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. Namibia, land of the brave. Brave men and women who dedicate their lives to protecting a country of harsh terrain, ancient cultures and vulnerable wildlife. Namibian conservationists Dr. Rudy and Marlies van Vieden are on a mission to travel the length and breadth of Namibia to meet these intrepid individuals and to witness the incredible work they undertake on a daily basis. These are the unsung heroes of Namibian conservation and these are their wild jobs. Namibia's coastline is very unique. We have the cold Benguela sea current, and that causes this harsh environment with a lot of sand dunes, barren landscapes with almost nothing there. And it is also very full of minerals. The Namib Desert is actually a diamond on its own, but a lot of these diamonds have been mined out. But we found a diamond in the Namib, a man called Tommy Collard, and we've been looking forward to meeting him for a very long time. He's a guru when it comes to life in the desert, and he's going to teach us what life there is in the desert. And the other important thing he's going to teach us is how to go through the Namib, only leaving a green print. Tommy and one of his guides, Chantel, know the Namib desert like the back of their hands. They not only know the plant and animal life here intimately, but can also read the signs in the sand. They also know the price that is paid when people drive into the desert in an irresponsible and ignorant way. Okay, we are we we are looking at the Bushman newspaper now early morning, and we can see there are tracks all over on the dunes, and this is what we call the Bushman newspaper. There's a bird that came down here, there are lizard tracks over there, there's a beetle track going up, and this is actually a trench digging beetle. Uh, it has a different pattern on, on the sand, and the Bushman newspaper is something very interesting. Most people can't wait in the morning to go to the supermarket to buy a newspaper to read what's the daily happenings. We can't wait in the morning to come here and read these tracks. To give you an idea, uh, when I did survival and tracking with Bushmen in the military days, it was so amazing that people that can't read or write, how much they can read on the sand. And that's the Bushmen newspaper. What track is that? That is a shovel-snouted lizard, a lizard track here, and it's been digging for uh, silver fish, fish moss over there that we find in the dunes, that's a food. You can see there's one place where he dug a hole, and there's another place, and then he was walking around and eating something here. And so he moved along, and that's just the new Bushman newspaper. Okay, let's go and show you the animals that made these tracks. Okay. Come, Vidi. <coughs> Okay. Okay. 
it in your own. Okay, so don't get out of The Nubb is a harsh place, and some encounters can potentially be fatal. For the snake, the lizard is not only a potential food source, but also a source of water in this dry desert. Tommy works in close collaboration with researchers. In a study on Beringi's adders, some specimens were fitted with microchips. Whenever Tommy and Chantel find one, they scan it for a microchip and note the GPS coordinates. Aha, uh -huh. what's that number? 02 Echo 7. Take the GPS coordinates and see where did we see him the last time. Dus nu een peringwis ader of wat in Engels zeggen een sidewinder. Sidewinder. Hulle beweeg zijwaarts. Eerstens, als een mens omkijkt, dan is omtrent 50 procent van zijn leven niet op die zand als hij beweegt niet. Hij kan dan ook warm zand bewegen. En dan ook als hij denkt, met hij zijn hele lichaamslengte vastrap op die denk. What kind of snake is it? This is a sidewinder or a penguin's adder. And is he cytotoxic or neurotoxic or hemotoxic? Uh, yes, uh, all snake venoms have got all three components. The one just um, strongly represented in, in one snake to the other. They all have uh, their certain purposes. Um, he has a very unique venom in the, that he destroys eyesight of children. Sure. That's probably the, the neurotoxic component. Must yes. be, eh? Why is it tail black? The, the tip of the tail is black because they drink water with it. So this snake can survive his whole life in the desert without drinking a drop of water. And how old can they get? Uh, they can reach 14 years of age. Uh, the book says maximum length 23.7 centimeters. We have chipped and released here 32 centimeters. So it's nearly fully grown, but it can go as thick as my finger. But we have spent so much time in the desert and the kids are always barefooted and mm. run around in the dunes. How do we know where to find them? If I take him with me for a week uh -huh. on a trip, um, he will quickly show you where, where the snakes are. Okay. It's just a, a, you have to teach your eyes to look because your eyes are like a normal muscle, they're lazy. But snakes uh, don't bite easily. If you take the amount of people that come to Swakopmund, being the holiday mecca on the west coast of Africa, thousands every year. Uh, at least everybody in the dunes once a year or at Sosos Flay. The last uh, 19 years, 20 years, uh, nine people were bitten by these snakes. Five tried to catch them, I was one. So uh, it's more dangerous driving to the supermarket in your car to buy a newspaper than being bitten by a snake in the Namib Desert wearing, <laughs> going barefoot. Okay. I've been doing this tour since 1997. I've never been bitten by a snake on my foot. No. Sure. sure. The snake's scientific name, 
Vitus Peringi comes from a South African entomologist and museum director, Louis Peringi. What's the natural enemy in this area? Uh, the natural enemy here uh, will be um, large chameleon. A large chameleon will eat a medium to a small side winer. Uh, scorpions, we have a very interesting scorpion here that can reach 18 centimeters um, and they are day active. So uh, they, they will eat them. Um, we have a little rock kestrel here that will eat them. After the big rains of 2011, we've got mongoose here that will eat them. But the biggest enemy is, uh, if I have to bracket it, it will be humans with uh, vehicles, motorbikes, and because of the, the nature of the snake to bury into the sand, um, if you move fast, you will never see them. And you just arrive right over there. Like always? Like always, yes. Good, we have lots more to go and show you. Let's go. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. With this morning tour, the guys marked a place here because with the wind blowing now, it blows away the whole Busman newspaper and uh, then you will not be able to see it. And uh, although you could not see it apart from the two stones, there was actually a very nice animal lying in the sand here. And that's the problem with people doing 4x4 driving in the dunes. Uh, if they drive over an animal like this, which they can't see, uh, that animal will die from an acute case of compression. Okay. Oh, yeah. What's that? Ah. It's a mice. Oh, yes. yes. Wow. Look at that. We actually have to keep him in the shade. It's a female palmetto gecko, and she's pregnant. One egg is starting to develop here, and one egg there. And you can count every rib. The She's pink, like see-through. The pink part is the lungs, you know, the vertebrae. They have feet like a duck. Uh, the skin can't grow, it can only stretch, so they shed like a snake. Every time they get a new cornea on the eye, you can't scratch the eye with your fingernail. Why? They don't have eyelids. If it wasn't for the markers, we would never have known about this. And uh, because we're on fixed roots, we know that the impact is minimal. So uh, if you come into the Namop, it's not what you see, but what you don't see. And you have, we have to make people so aware of the sensitivity of this area. Very, very, very important. Mm. Wow, such a beautiful... Namakwa chameleon occurs in the western parts of Namibia and the northwestern section of South Africa. They can grow to a length of 30 centimeters and is one of the fastest chameleon species in the world. And if your prey is this quick, you have to be fast. This black scorpion is very venomous and Tommy has to be careful. Really, 
Elise, come and have a look here. Whoa. What does he have there? Shoe. What is this? Mm. This is a very interesting scorpion, Parabetes velocis. Um, you, you want to feel it? Okay. <laughs> we, we, we well can't. Uh, well done, Zach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at that, man. Zach, you, you. Much Very few people have got a picture like that. Don't yes. break my fingers off. <laughs> He's holding my hands so hard. <laughs> okay, most scorpions move at night. This one only moves in the day. Uh, black in color, they can reach 18 centimeters this long. You know? Uh, just about deadly. He can squirt his venom. And there's no antivenom. No antivenom. No antivenom. Okay. And it's a, it's a neurotoxin. Neurotoxin. And uh, to give you an idea, uh, to quickly uh, put scorpions in categories, all scorpions are venomous, but not all scorpions are deadly. So you get scorpions uh, with large pinchers and thin tails. They have so much hydraulic power with those pinchers, they basically kill everything with it. This one has got small pinches, so he hasn't got a lot of power there, so the power is here. Yeah. He's got eight eyes, two on top there, and on every side where the pinches come out, there are three little dots, three eyes on each side, eight eyes altogether, but he can't see very well. He can uh, discern between light and day a little bit, you know, dark and light, and movement. So the whole body is full of hair. It's and it, uh, Can you is, see that? Is it, does it move in the night or in the day? Or? Only day active. Only day active. Only day active. And uh, the hair is like sensors. They can pick up vibration from the ground as well as from the air. And then he's got another uh, help underneath his belly. There are two little arms that look like feathers. Can you see that? They, they call that pectins. And when he's moving, that's always on the ground. It looks like little brooms. Yeah, like, like he's raking. And yes. <laughs> yeah. Do they hibernate or not? Um, scorpions are inactive 93 to 97% of their lives. Of their lives? Of their lives. And he can, uh, they can survive without food for a year. Yes. So it's not something that we see every day. We were now quite yes. lucky just to pick up the track this morning. Yeah. Uh, so they can survive without food for a very, very long what's time. What's their predator now? Um, other scorpions oh, yeah? will eat them. Um, a large chameleon will eat him. Uh, mongoose, mm, mongoose. Suricats. Uh, birds. We've seen track track chats eat uh, okay. uh, young scorpions. Polecats? Polecats, oh, for sure, yes. Sure. Um, and they have a very thick, hard fat layer on them. Polecats, mongoose, suricats. And that does not let venom through easily. Sure. So, ah. so if you're a fat person, you've got a better chance of survival than me, you know? Oh, so, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> so. Amazing, eh? Wow. Look at that, look at that. But that's why our polecat is so fat. He's supposed to be fat. He's eating all, yeah, he's he's eating all, the, he's all, the, all the scorpions. <laughs> and if he's very mad, he will, this part of the sting, he will scratch on the inside here, and it will make a kr 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 sound. They call it stridulate. The hard body consists of manganese, iron, and tin, so it's quite hard and tough here. Yes. Oh, it's amazing. And they also lit up at night, eh? Yeah, if you like shine a, a UV light on him at night, he goes fluorescent green. Wow. Uh, but they grow and they mold. And if you shine a UV light on the old mold, that also goes fluorescent green. Sure. And if you shine a UV light on a scorpion fossil in rock, it also goes fluorescent green. It's in there. It Amazing be... stuff. Phew. It looks like an ancient creature. Oh, yes. Brilliant. This was hmm? it's a brilliant. And he makes a lovely track of the sand. Oh, I'd love to see that. We'll have to show you those tracks. Yeah, we show us that. Now, fast can they move to you? Uh, scorpions can move quite, quite fast and very far as well. We have tracked them on the dunes sometimes 300 meters in the afternoon, where we were in the morning, you know, where there were no tracks. In the afternoon you come and there's a set of tracks and you start running on it 300 meters. Jeez, for such a small And uh, they can just motor. Sure, it's beautiful. Sure. Beautiful. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager.
Tommy spends almost every day here in the desert near Swakopmund, and over the years, he's made some remarkable friends. Uh, many years ago, when we came here, there was a little bird sitting here, and she looked so bad, I thought she came out of a washing machine. So uh, we gave her 24 hours, she'll be dead. We started feeding her, and she recovered. Every year, she brought us two chicks. And these are now the birds that we can call and they come and land on, on our hands. Okay. Today was an amazing day because we had the opportunity to spend it with Tommy in the beautiful desert. And I've learned so much. I've seen animals that I've never seen. I only saw on documentaries and on television. So I've also learned today that most of what's in the desert, we don't see. And we actually as people have the biggest impact on these animals. To meet people like Tommy Collard is an inspiration for me. Because here's a guy who's got incredible knowledge of the desert. You can actually see his heart is in this. And then it makes me so angry when I see all these off-road tracks. Marlies gets very upset when animals are mistreated. But that's the same kind of feeling I get when I see the environment mistreated. And I want to say to people, read the signs. Take your 4x4 or your quad bike and stay on the tracks. Because you, if you go out of the tracks, you destroy life. Life that you won't see. Life that's underground in this sensitive ecosystem. Wild Jobs Namibia with Rudy and Marlies is proudly sponsored by Vintuk Lager.